pack saddles for long distance horse riding adventures? Do you kind of save some money and go for the cheapy canvassy ones? Or do you kind of splurge and get an expensive one? Uh, that is what we are going to be talking about in today's video. We are going to be sharing the pack that I use to actually ride my two horses across Ireland. And, you know, I got the cheapy one. Is it kind of good, not good? What were my thoughts about that and what would I do differently in the future? So that is what we're going to be covering. I'm your host, Crystal Kelly, and this is the channel dedicated to helping you travel the world on horseback adventures. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and do me another favor, hit the like button below because it actually helps people to discover our channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so much for hitting the like button and subscribing. Imagine riding your horses in the middle of the wilderness and then suddenly your strap breaks. Okay, what would you do? How would you handle that? Are you gonna kick yourself thinking, oh my gosh, I should have got the more expensive saddlebag? Uh, you know, what was I thinking? So when it comes to pack saddles, okay, so the bags for you to put all of your stuff in, like you're basically living out of your saddlebags for the next weeks or months or years or however long. So, you know, What's the best thing that you can do when you're investing in the saddlebags and what were my personal thoughts on the specific one that I used for my adventures in Ireland? Now the saddlebags that I used in Ireland were actually, they were the same brand but I bought two different kinds. Now I bought front saddlebags uh, for the front. I had English saddles, okay, two English saddles. So I wanted something for the front of the saddle which doesn't hook to the horn because we didn't have a horn. So I wanted something that I could kind of strap or fashion for the, you know, front of the English saddle. So I managed to find some which were, you know, they're just cheapy little saddle bags. I don't remember how much I paid, but they were very cheap, very inexpensive. And, you know, the ride that we were planning on doing across Ireland, we knew it was going to be wet. So we wanted to make sure that they were waterproof, if nothing else. So the ones that we got were definitely waterproof. And the front saddles, saddle bags were just meant to hold like water bottles and just basic small emergency things which we needed to access quickly. The other thing that we had were the saddle bags for the back of the saddle. Now we had two different kinds. Um, for my horse, it, she's a little Arabian mare and she has a very short back. So I didn't want to put a lot of stuff on her back because it would go actually on her bum. So on her bum, we ended up using a dry bag um, which actually was made from motorcycles and we put our sleeping bags in there. So it was basically empty um, And then that actually sat on top of her bum just behind my saddle You can actually see in our series where we actually cover our adventures riding across Ireland That the we had a hard time trying to get that thing to stay on her little tiny round bum And she has this like super power walk and it just kept slipping around So I think it took us probably a couple of weeks um, before we figured out enough bailing twine and bungee cords and straps to actually manage to get it to stay in one spot. Um, so that was kind of a process and it, some days, you know, it just didn't work and other days it did just fine. So we used a waterproof uh, motorcycle bag for the sleeping bags for my little Arabian mare with a short back. Now she had another type of saddle bags which actually went underneath her saddle rested on top of the saddle pad and actually went on either side of her belly. Now, these were square, they didn't fit a lot of space. Um, and because they were very square and narrow, you couldn't put wide items into it, not without it kind of poking out and making the bag scrunch up, which might maybe rub against her weirdly. So those bags I found a little bit awkward and we had to kind of just keep flat things. So I had some like journals or uh, I don't remember exactly, but whatever flat things we had, we kind of would put on either side of the pack. And then I just put basically small stuff. So my horse, Lily, actually, she managed to go across Ireland for two months and she was not carrying very much stuff. So she was, I think, totally fine, totally oblivious that life could be difficult. Um, it was slightly heavy, not too much. She probably had an extra 10 pounds, <laughs> maybe 15. Um, so that was Lily's situation. Uh, Q, our thoroughbred horse, we actually had a different setup. So Q is bigger, she's 16'1", she's very long backed. So we had a little sheep pad, which it was literally just a sheep. It wasn't actually designed for horses. It was just a basically skin of a sheep that somebody had gifted to us. And we kind of folded it in half and kind of 
pu punched holes into it and fashioned some little straps so that we could tie it to the front of the saddle so it wouldn't slip around. So she had her saddle pad and then the sheep pad and we wanted the sheep pad to be on her back where the saddlebags would go because the saddlebags were made of this kind of canvas, I don't know, nylon material and you know, she's a thoroughbred. She's a little bit bony, like that's just how she is. And you know, I just didn't want it to rub on her and to cause her irritation. And I didn't trust the saddlebags by itself to not do that. So we definitely put the sheet pad under. The sheet pad seemed to do its job and there was no signs of rubbing or anything on our horse um, cue throughout the entire ride. And we rode for two months when we typically rode for about five or six hours every single day. Now this was not walk, um, but she just kind of put herself on a pace and she just sort of maintained that pace all day. So, you know, unfortunately, if something was to rub, it would because she just kind of would put herself on that pace all day. So, you know, we are very lucky. We did have one thing rub with her on one day. It was really, really silly. Um, it was actually in the front saddlebags where our water bottle goes. We actually, I think we took the camera out to take some pictures or something and we put it in the bag slightly different than we usually do and somehow it kind of shifted around enough that it actually started to rub her. Um, luckily we stopped for lunch or whatever so it had just rubbed the hair um, and we felt awful because she didn't even react or anything. Um, but yeah, luckily we caught it before it actually did any damage or something. Um, so yeah, after that we remember to always put the camera in a certain spot so it would never rub her. Um, so I definitely am very, very, you know, particular about checking if something is poking them to see that it might potentially rub. So I think if all of the saddlebags are positioned in a way that nothing's rubbing, I think you're good. Um, so the other type of bags that we had on the back of Q, so she had uh, kind of a canvas bag which was velcro so it would kind of come off and we put all of our clothes in that one so it was sitting on top of her back um, so we put all of our clothes on that one we didn't want the stuff on her spine to be too heavy um, so we put the heavier stuff on the two side bags that were kind of dangling and then on the top we also fashioned our tent our tent wasn't actually a part of the saddlebag equipment so we had to sort of strap it to the bag with the clothes uh, we didn't have very much clothes. We both had, I think, two pairs of clean shirts, a pair of, I think, two pairs of uh, riding breeches of some kind, which were very lightweight. One we were wearing and then one was in the bag so we could have one clean and one dirty at all times. And then, um, you know, just like basic stuff, some socks and things like that. And then I think one pair of sleeping, sleeping clothes. So we didn't have a lot of clothes so they would kind of compress and the uh, tent actually fit quite nicely on that bag and that seemed to work quite well. We ended up downsizing our tent. We got a little bit of a smaller tent like halfway through the ride. Um, we did that more just because we didn't want to have our horse carrying so much weight. My husband only weighs 70 kilos. He's not very heavy um, and the saddlebags also they weren't very heavy. We were riding very very minimalistic because we were knocking on doors you know asking strangers for a place to stay for our horses. So yeah, our sort of saddle bag experience is probably different than what yours might be because we weren't carrying any food or stoves or anything. You know, we literally just had what we could fit on our horses and that was it. Um, we would stop at fuel stations to grab food, stuff like that. So we were very minimalistic. Um, she also had, like I said, the two bags on the side. Now hers were much wider than Lily's, so we did for a little while. We carried a stove and some pots and things which were really lightweight. We ended up not really using them, so I think we used them like three times, I don't know, probably around that, and then I think we ended up getting rid of most of it. Um, but she had also some heavier items, so she was carrying around an extra rope, like an extra lead rope and lunch rope, and a few other things. Um, so she had a little bit more weight on her, but again, not too bad. Also probably around 20 pounds maximum. Actually, that seems too much. Probably about the same. Um, but yeah, so as far as the saddlebags, you know, did they survive our ride? Actually, I think in the first week, some of the loops actually tore. Um, we weren't able to just put the straps on. They weren't, they're not really made for English saddles. We kind of made it work, I think. Um, and there were some weird kind of buckles. So the little loops on my horse's saddlebags definitely ripped. Um, 
not the loop itself, but the little metal piece that was kind of guarding the hole came off and it was, yeah, I mean, it was completely taken off. Um, other than that, none of the zippers broke. They were waterproof. They did keep our stuff mostly dry. However, when we were riding and it was raining a lot, obviously we were riding in Ireland, which is known for raining. Um, we both wore big ponchos, which we had gotten in Brazil. So that covered all of the saddlebags and equipment and ourselves. So we kind of had two layers of protection to keep our stuff dry. And that seemed to work quite well. Um, other comments about the saddlebags, they were inexpensive. Um, personally, after that adventure, I don't really plan on using them ever again. They, they're not totally trashed. I totally could wash them in the washing machine and use them again. Um, but yeah, I think if I was to do future long distance adventures, I would probably invest in leather saddlebags. But they were really good because honestly, I was planning on just doing it as a one-time, one-off experience. So I was satisfied with my adventure. So for me, it was kind of like a one-time use, like use it for this adventure and then I never have to use it ever again. So because I didn't want to invest a lot of money in it and because I was just doing it as a one-time thing for two months, uh, I think they worked out perfect and I'm actually totally happy and satisfied with them. Um, Again, if I was to do something more hardcore, more intense, probably I would go with leather leather uh, saddlebags. But yeah, other than that, I think that they are great and they are perfect for small mini adventures. Um, so we still have them just kind of as a backup. The front ones definitely come in handy. They definitely fit our water bottles and important things. Um, but yeah, so I'm quite happy with those saddlebags. I would definitely recommend for someone to use them as a start um, or if you're not too worried about them getting beat up and trashed a little bit um, and if you're not somewhere too horribly wet then I think they're pretty good. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please comment below and let me know what kind of saddlebags you have used or you're looking at and if you want any other information or tips about saddlebags. If you are thinking about having equestrian adventures on horseback and you want to just kind of like read about other women's adventures, I would highly recommend that you check out the Equestrian Adventuresses book series. You can actually find these on Amazon worldwide. Um, there's a lot of, so my story about riding my horses in Ireland is actually in book one. And in the other books you will find other women's stories. There's a woman who actually took her toddlers and they're riding across South America for the past couple of years. I mean, pretty insane. Looks, makes my ride across Ireland look like, I mean, child's play basically. Um, there's another woman who actually bought horses in Mongolia and she decided to travel around Mongolia and she ended up in lots of different countries doing that. So yeah, these are definitely worth checking out. I'm going to provide the link for you so you can go to our author page on Amazon and actually check out these books. Uh, you know, I think they're pretty useful. They have a lot of useful information and super amazing stories of awesome women having adventures on horseback. I mean, where can you go wrong? So yeah, the Equestrian Adventuresses series. Uh, book one is called Saddles and Sisterhood. Number two is Going the Distance. And number three is Leg Up. So yeah, you can even see Going the Distance has a picture of a lady with her pack horses. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching and happy trails.